All right, hello there, Mac users and Mac automators. This is Bakari Shivanu with Mac Automation Tips. Welcome back to another video. This is day two of the five day Mac Automation Challenge, and I am really excited to be doing this. I've really been great to hear from some of you about what you're doing and just kind of the reaction to the challenge. I want to give a shout out to Mike because he posted up a really nice, uh, good uh, kind of macro that he created, or a set of macros that he created uh, for Keyboard Maestro. And so he's, he posted it on my Twitter account and I kind of retweeted it. So maybe you can see it if you go onto my Twitter account. So in today's uh, episode, I'm going to focus in on Keyboard Maestro because some of you have been asking for some, you know, some videos on that. And I've already done some, but this particular video, I'm going to focus in on five types of macros that I typically like using in Keyboard Maestro. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we go now. We're up here in Keyboard Maestro. Now in this particular video, I'm kind of assuming that you're a little bit familiar with Keyboard Maestro. I will be creating a, um, a course, a comprehensive course on how to use Keyboard Maestro, but I assume that you know how to create a macro and that kind of thing, so I'm not gonna cover that in this particular video. But here you go. Um, the, one of the first types of macros that I use are time triggers. I love time triggers because that's true automation. And so you see I have several here, but the one, uh, let me just give you an example of one of them here. The This one here um, tr fires off at 9.38 a.m. That's about the time that I get into my uh, office around, you know, 9.30, 10 o'clock. And what it does is that um, throughout the week, what it'll, it'll do is it'll open up an application called Caffeine because I want you know, my app, I want that uh, my computer to stay open for at least an hour uh, until, until I get to the computer because my computer is slow sometimes. And so I needed to have it running and going when I get to it. So then next what it'll do is it'll hide Safari because it usually have Safari uh, pages open there. So it will hide that. And then it will activate mail. It will, you know, put it to the forefront and then it will activate my Todoist application. So those are the first, those are the two applications that I really want to have ready to go when I get to my computer. So that's my kind of um, time trigger. Another time trigger here that I'm kind of testing out is that um, when my computer wakes, you know, if I've been away from my computer for a minute and it goes to sleep and if, it, if I wake it back up throughout the day, it will show the notification center. So it will trigger the hotkey that I've given for notification center. So I can just kind of quickly look at it and uh, see what, uh, what's, what's on my schedule for in Todoist. I don't really want to open up the entire Todoist application, but I do want to see what's in notifications there. So I can just check that. Another one I'm experimenting with too is because I'm trying to start using Twitter on the Mac a lot more than I am on um, on my iOS devices because I'm kind of wasting too much time on my iOS devices, um, you know, browsing Twitter. So I'm going to just have it quickly open up uh, uh, Tweetbot and let me see if I can kind of respond to some of the, um, you know, some of the tweets that I get or some of the replies or what have you or retweets or whatever uh, there on my Mac, which is a lot is a lot faster to do it. All right, the next, the next type uh, of macro that I use are string triggers. Now, if you've been following my website and you've been reading my articles, you know that I write about string triggers a lot. I use string triggers over, you know, like they're more to me, they're more of a advantage to use string triggers than it is to use keyboard shortcuts. And what string triggers do is that they enable you to type short, like little, like one or two, three words, whatever, uh, letters, I'm sorry, letters that, you know, that are not particularly words, but they're letters and they trigger off something, they make something happen and then, um, you know, they disappear, right? So they, so you type it, it disappears and then it, uh, it, it triggers a particular action. So this is a pretty, pretty advanced one here. So for example, if I'm typing, uh, something and I want to I want my cursor to get to the end of a paragraph or end of a section of text right I type JP right and it will go to the end of that text uh, it's the same thing I have one that will go from the if I'm if I type a word and um, I wanted to, to, to backspace um, one word or two words or three words I have a trigger for that as well now this is really advanced and I'll do a video on it but that's that's one type Another type of, um, of, of string trigger that I use is when I want to paste 
whatever on my uh, system clipboard, um, I can just type VV and it will uh, paste what's on the the current clipping on or, or the yeah the current clipping on my system clipboard. So there is a lot of stuff that you can do with string triggers. I'm not even getting in depth with it enough, but I posted a couple, I have a links to a couple articles in the comment section that you can go link to. And I'll also be doing a video on this. All right. Number three, the number three is what I'm, the third type is I really like the app, uh, the active back, the, um, activate application switcher, uh, macro that I created here. Uh, really, I did, a, I did a video on this one as well. I prefer the I prefer Keyboard Maestro's application switcher over the um, Apple's application switcher for many reasons. So check out that video there uh, while I do that. This particular uh, application uh, or macro is mapped to a better touch tool finger gesture. Now, the better touch tool finger gesture allows for the application switcher to stay open and I'll have to hold down the uh, tab, um, the, the command tab keys to keep the switcher open. Now, it won't do that. You know, Keyboard Maestro won't do that alone. And I should have pointed that out in that video that I did. But that's what it. you have to kind of map it to it if you want to keep that switcher open so you can do different things. So just watch the video. You'll get an idea if you haven't seen it already, okay? All right. The, uh, the fourth type of... Um, a macro that I like is uh, it was called Quick Record, and this one I did a video on this one as well, so I'll link to that and you can go check it out as well. But this allows me to create a quick record of some of a series of actions that I want to automatically play back by, just by just by you know hitting um, uh, the the trigger key right. And um, this was again this is advanced uh, keyboard maestro thing as well, uh, but you can. You, it's already put together for you, and if you go to that video that I have on it, it will show you how to use it. So that's the one that I really like, Quick Record. I'm not sure if there's any other application for the Mac that does something like this. So that's Quick Record. Check it out. All right, number five. Number five, um, I, another type of macro that I like is ones that click an image, right? It clicks an image. Um, that um, say in, in, a, in an application or what have you. And I usually use this because the application doesn't have a menu item or a keyboard shortcut in order to click that action. So for example, in TweetBot, which I started, started using on my Mac, um, it has a lot of good menu items and keyboard shortcuts, but ironically, it does not, as far as I know, it does not have a way to hit the Tweet button in, in, in that application. So if I type a tweet, I don't want to have to take my hand off the keyboard in order to hit that button. So I created a macro and basically what I use is a string trigger to trigger this macro. And this, what this macro does is it finds this little button here that's in TweetBot and it, you know, it hits it, you know, it, it clicks it right there. It clicks it. And, uh, and, and, and that, that, that sends it off. That, that's, that's a man, you normally have to do kind of a manual click of that button, but with this macro, it would do it just by typing those three letters, S, N, D. So that's, uh, and I have several different types of uh, macros like this uh, to do that. So it's kind of the move and click action in Keyboard Maestro. All right, so that's um, the video for day two of the Mac Automation challenge five days so let me know uh, in the comment section below which trigger you're interested in and for me to tell more about right and if you've done any of these type of um you know macros in your keyboard maestro hey share them with the with the rest of us we really want to see the kind of work that you're doing if this is the first time that you are you know coming to my channel here definitely uh, please you know hit that subscribe button if you're not a follower of mac automation tips also subscribe there as well because i'll be pushing out a lot of content particularly on youtube over the next several months so definitely do that and i appreciate your comments your questions your feedback really great that you're watching and i will see you tomorrow for day three of the mac Auto